Hey, hello friends, welcome to Retro Portal Studio. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at creating image filters in Flutter without using any external package. So you can see that here I have a list of image filters and I can swipe through them in the page view and different filters are applied on a sample image. If I want to apply this grayscale filter, I can simply click on this check button right here and the image is processed and ready to deploy it to a server or save it to your local storage. So let's take a look at how to create these image filters in Flutter. Okay, so right now I'm in a simple Flutter app in which I just have this my home page. And in my home page, I have the scaffold. And in the scaffold, I have an app bar which has a simple text of image filters and a simple action button that will be used to save the image. And along with this, the scaffold has a background color of black and a body which has a center with a container. Along with this, in the project, I also have this sample image which we will use to apply the effects on. So the first thing that we'll do is in the container, I'll add the property of constraints. We need this constraints property to limit the width and height of this container. This constraints takes a value of type box constraints and in the box constraint, I'll have to give a maximum width and maximum height. For this maximum width, what I'll do is I'll come up in the build function and here I'll create a new final variable that will be of type size. I'll name this size and put it equal to media query dot off context dot size. Now I can use this size property to give it a size of size dot width because we want the width of the image to be equal to the width of the screen. Now for the maximum height, I'll give the same value because the image is going to be square. You can use different size properties according to your own applications. But for this case, I'll have an image of one by one aspect ratio. Now for the child of this container, we need to give it a page view so that we can swipe through the list of images. For this, I'm going to use page view dot builder. And in the item builder function of this page view, I'll give it a function that will take in the context and the index. In the body of this function, we're gonna return an image that will come from assets. And for the path of asset, we'll pass in assets slash images slash sample dot PNG. Along with this path, we'll also give it a property of width that is going to be equal to size dot width. With this width property, we can also give this image another property that is called fit and for this, we'll set the value to boxfit.cover. At this point in our application, for the page view to work, we'll just pass in a property of item count and give it a value of four. At this point, if I save the app, you can see that I have a page view here with four images that I can swipe through. Okay, so now that we have a base ready for our application, the next thing we'll take a look at is how to apply those filters. For this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to wrap this image with a color filter. So this color filtered widget is given to us by the Flutter SDK and it takes in a color filter and it overlays its child with this color filter. So the trick is to use this color filter property to our advantage. This color filter property takes in a value of type color filter. And this color filter class gives us with two major constructors that is dot mode and dot matrix. This mode constructor is useful in cases when you want to overlay the image with a single color and you want to give it some blend mode. But for more flexibility with RGB colors, we want to use this matrix constructor. Now, if we need to use this color filter dot matrix, we need to give it a list of doubles. And this list of doubles basically represents an FE color matrix. And if we take a look at this matrix function, you can see that they have given us an example on how to create a grayscale filter. So let's just copy these values and use them in the matrix. So in the matrix, what I'll do is I'll just paste those values and I'll remove the comments. And at this point, if I save the app, you can see that the image is converted to a grayscale image. Now from this, you can see that all we have to do is we have to create different matrices so we can apply different filters on our images. Now that we know how to apply these effects, let's take a look at what is an FE color matrix. You can learn about FE color matrix at this link that will be in the description of this video. Essentially, an FE color matrix looks something like this. Basically what happens is that the color filtered widget takes in an FE color matrix and performs a matrix multiplication of image pixels and this FE color matrix. And because I don't want this tutorial to turn into a mathematics tutorial, what I'll do is I'll take you to another website for which you can find the link in the description below. And here you can create an FE color matrix according to your own taste. Now let's choose a matrix and use it in our application. For now, I'll select the sapium effect and I'll copy these values back in the application. In the lib folder, I'll create a new file and name this filters. 
here, I'll create a new constant and name this sapium. The value of this constant is going to be equal to an array of double. Here you can see that when I paste the values from the website, I need to reformat these for a list of double. Once the values are reformatted, it will look something like this. So let's use this sapium effect on the image. And here, in place of this grayscale matrix, I'll simply pass in sapium. At this point, if I save the app and go back to the emulator, you can see that the sapium effect is applied on the image. One thing you should know if you want to create your own matrices, you should try to manipulate the values of first three rows and first four columns of this matrix. All the other values should be left untouched. So let's get back to the app. I'll go to the filters.art and here I'll paste in the values of a few more matrices that I have. Now I'll go back to the main.dart file and here in the state I'll create a final list that will be a list of list of doubles. I'll name this filters and in this I have all the color matrices that we created. Also in the pageview.builder instead of an item count of 4 now I can pass in filters.length. Along with this, instead of this constant sapium color that we apply for the color matrix, we can now pass in filters and give it an index of index. At this point, if I save and run the app, you can now see the color filter is applied to each image in the page view. Next, we need to take a look at how to save these images. For that, what I need to do is I need to wrap this container with a repaint boundary. And along with this, I also need to create a global key. For this, I'll create a new final global key. I'll name this global key and put it equal to a new instance of global key. I'll use this key for the key property of the repaint boundary. Once this is done, I'll come up here and I'll add a function of convert widget to image. This function comes from a video that I created on taking screenshots in Flutter and the link for that video is in the description below. For this UI.image, I'll come to the top of the file and here I'll import UI class from Dart in a variable of UI. Also, I'll import all the other classes. Now, in the end of this convert widget to image function, you can see that we have an unsigned integer list that we can use to create an image or save this image as a file. The next thing that I'll do is in the lib folder, I'll create a new file and I'll name this second screen. For the second screen, I'll simply create a new stateless widget and I'll name this second screen. And on the top, I'll import the material.dart file. Instead of this container, I'll create a new scaffold and for the background color of scaffold, I'll pass in colors.black. And for body of scaffold, I'll pass in the container. And in the build function, I'll create a new size variable and I'll pass in the constraints to the container. In the second screen, we also need to take in the unsigned integer list and I'll name this image data. I'll also create a simple constructor. And for the child of this container, I'll add the image widget. In this case, I'm creating an image from the memory for which we can pass in the unsigned integer list that we get from the main screen. Now, I'll come back to the main.dart file and here in the convert widget to image function, once the unsigned integer list is created, what we can do is we can use the navigator and for the context, I'll pass in the global key dot current context and I'll push to a new page with the help of material page route and in the material page route, I'll give it the property of builder and for this, I'll pass in the context and I'll return the second screen. And in this, we can pass in the image data and that will be the unsigned integer list. At this point, all we need to do is we need to use the convert widget to image function. For this, I'll come to the app bar and here in the actions, I have this icon button. And for the on press function, I'll pass in convert widget to image. I'll bring back the emulator. And at this point, if I change the effect and click on this check button, you can see that we're taken to a second page and the filter is successfully applied on the image. From here, you can use this unsigned integer list to create a new file on the local storage or upload it to the server. One thing that I'll do is I'll come to the second screen and I'll wrap this container with a center widget. And if I save the app, you can see that the image is now centered on the screen. I'll go back and choose some other effect and click on the check button and you can see that the image is ready. From this tutorial, you have seen that how easy it is to create image filters in Flutter. But one thing you have to keep in mind that this way can only be used to apply filters on image files. I hope you find this video useful and you'll find the code for this in the description below. And also in the description, I'll link you to an article in which I have given some more effects that you can directly use in your applications. If you find this video useful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And also consider supporting Retro Portal Studio from the links in the description below for more Flutter videos coming your way. See you next time. Peace.